we need to start by acknowledging that we live in extraordinary times. Okay? And when you live in extraordinary times, seriously, you do not expect to continue doing the same things you are doing during ordinary times. Yeah? In these extraordinary times. And expect that they will work. Expect that everything will be okay. Of course, that makes zero sense. Hakuna kitu kama hiyo. What this means, which is very important for you and me, what this means is that we must adjust to these extraordinary times. That is the only way we will survive. Before we go into what we can do, indeed what we must do, let us just quickly review some of the latest extraordinary things that are happening. Yeah, that in my opinion are really the last warning. The last warning for us to wake up quickly and act and do something. Now, the Mashuja Day celebrations are coming up on the 20th of October, the 20th of this month. And of course, if you have been living in Kenya and following the politics closely, you will know that the big concern is how will you get Kenyans to attend the Mashuja Day celebrations? How do you avoid an embarrassment for the president and the UDA government talking to empty seats, talking to an empty stadium? How do you avoid that? Okay? And that is why emerging claims that some people are going to come from a neighboring country to fill a stadium on a Kenyan National Day, a very important Kenyan National Day. That is why those claims and allegations are most intriguing. <laughs> what? He can yet to end up. Of course we do not know the authenticity of this very crazy story. However, if we look at the track record of the UDA government so far, and if we look at the character of the people making decisions at a very high level within the government, then at the very least, this is not something you can just dismiss like that without further interrogation. Or further investigation. And I dare add the advantages and the attractions of such a scheme are rather obvious. For starters, the crowd will be a lot cheaper. You know you can pay people, Kenyans, to turn up. And that has been done in the past. Even during the presidency of Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta at one point. However, even with our many, many, many problems, including economic problems, the Kenyan shilling is still very strong and very attractive to our neighbors. And what that means, the same money you can buy one single Kenyan to turn up for the celebrations, you can use the same money to buy three or even four people from a neighboring country. Because when you convert the Kenyan shilling into their currency, it becomes a lot of money. It is just like somebody coming in from the U.S. and converting their dollar into Kenyan shillings. And the name of the country that is being thrown around is Burundi. There is a lot of poverty in Burundi. The other obvious advantage is that you can buy a Kenyan to, to turn up for the celebrations. And they turn up. But then somewhere in the middle, they remember their problems and they start jeering you. That is very unlikely to happen with a foreigner. Folks, we live in very extraordinary times. I wonder what the founding fathers of the Kenyan nation would say if they came back from the grave today and they heard such a story, such a rumor. They would quickly 
go back to the grave. Oh yes, that's not what they fought for. That is not the Kenya they envisaged. No way. We live in extraordinary times. The Ministry of Sports in Kenya recently spent quite an amount of money on international consultancy services. Okay? Over some games we are supposed to be hosting. And you will not believe the amount of money that was spent. Please brace yourself and wait for this one. They spent 1 billion Kenyan shillings. Ay, 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 ay. You know, as a country, we're getting robbed like there was no tomorrow. Okay? Folks, we live in extraordinary times. Because this kind of looting in the Kenyan government is definitely unprecedented. Trust me. Because I lived through the Moy days when we thought the looting was very bad. But right now, the Moy regime looks like it was very Safi Kamapamba in comparison to what is going down right now. Now, for those who have their hands very close to the pulse of the country called Kenya, you will have noticed that things are going downhill at a very rapid rate. We have businesses, famous businesses like restaurants, which usually open up, up to a certain time of the evening or the night, and now they are closing very early. Why? Because there are no customers. Why? Because people don't have money. People don't have purchasing power. And I can go on and on and on and on. But I'm sure many of you have stories that you can tell us to prove beyond any doubt that the country called Kenya is going down. And it is going down very fast. So, we have a choice. Either we just sit back and wait, we wait for disaster to unfold, or we can choose to do something. Something to prepare for the inevitable, to prepare for what is definitely coming, indeed, what is already here. And let us cut to the chase very quickly. In this new Kenya that is coming, that is indeed already here, you cannot continue spending your money the way you have been spending it, assuming that you are one of the few lucky Kenyans who are still earning real money, good money. You can't. You cannot continue handling money carelessly the same way you have been handling it. More so if you have the responsibility of looking after other people, yeah, like your children, your family etc etc if you have a business if you're running a business of any size you'll already have noticed that there's a big scarcity of customers and so you cannot continue getting your customers in the same way that you've been getting them before when things were normal when we are not living in extraordinary times like we are at the moment bottom line you need to completely change the way you're doing things. And you don't have a choice. This is a matter of survival. Trust me. So, what are you supposed to do? Please allow me to give you my own personal testimony. In the year 2019, something very strange came over me that had never come over me before. I started getting very obsessed over something. Have you ever felt very troubled, but you can't quite put your finger on what is troubling you? I'm sure many of us, if not all of us, have gone through that experience. Anyway, in the midst of all this turmoil in my life, what emerged was a series titled How to Prosper in a Dead Economy. 
Now at the time people were still complaining. But in retrospect, looking back at that time today, that was a golden era. <laughs> I kid you not. We were complaining about nothing. Because what we are facing now is serious. And trust me, nobody is immune to it. Even if you're on the high table of the UDA party, yeah, right there, eating like there's no tomorrow, trust me, sooner or later, it'll catch up with you. Okay? And so, something very interesting happened. Shortly after I released this series, the Corona Manenos came. Okay? Everybody was told to go home. You know what happened to people's livelihoods. And some of us said, wow, Chris could see the future. No. I believe it was for such a time as this. I believe from the bottom of my heart it was for such a time as what is coming. What is indeed at our doorsteps. And this series is relevant for virtually anybody. Because it is very thorough. Okay? And it doesn't talk theories. It talks reality. Okay? Very practical things. In fact, I have expanded it recently to include a video on personal finances. How you can revolutionize the way you handle your personal finances based on my own personal experience. Now, I'm not sure if you've heard of a man, a very famous man, called Muhammad Yunus. He is currently the head of the interim government in a country called Bangladesh. The prime minister of that country, Sheikh Hasina, resigned and she fled the country after weeks of manda manos, protests in that country. Very, very similar to what we saw with Gen Z's here in our own country of Kenya. Okay? And after he fled, an interim government was formed and it is headed by this famous man. Actually, he is also a decorated economist. Now, this is a man who invented village banking or table banking. You can look him up. Very interesting character. He founded the Grameen Bank, yeah, which in Bengali, the local language, means rural or village bank. And his innovation has spread right across the globe. And you know there are many people who think it is all about poor people handling their finances. I don't agree. Anybody can handle their finances in this way using the principles of Bwana Muhammad Yunus. And it can really revolutionize things for you. I have a personal testimony. And you don't have to start a group. You can just do it all by yourself. You as the only member. That is exactly how I myself have done it. And so I've included an extra video on personal finances, all based on the wonderful ideas of this man, which I myself have practically implemented. I am convinced this is for a time such as this one, when things are so crazy, when we live in very extraordinary times. Now this series is available once again at a very special offer of only Kenya shillings 4,995. You can see details on your screens right now. I strongly recommend it as a very important tool to survive and maybe even thrive and prosper in this very extraordinary times we're living in. Yeah, which are about to get a lot worse. Okay? Friends, brace yourselves and all the best. And whatever you do, even if you don't take in all these very relevant videos in this series of mine, all at the same place, even if you don't take this offer, please reorganize yourself and prepare because it is coming. And it is coming for sure. Until next time, 
This is Chris Kumekucha.